thanksgiving to God for a continued provision, both body and soul. They thank the Lord for their jobs and family. They pray that the good Lord bless us, bless them with peace and wisdom. They also thank God for a gift of the lives of their children, Brianna and Braxton, who are celebrating their birthday. They ask the Lord to bless them with knowledge so as to make wise and good decisions for themselves and their loved ones. They thank the Lord for a gift of family and friends. We join Mrs. Fiona Kesime, who thanks God for a gift of life and a lovely family. He has blessed her with she prays for good health, wisdom, long life and God's favor as we celebrate her birthday. We join Rachel Singendo, who prays for the souls of our late mothers. Mary Musoke, Nora, Mukasa, Solome Walusimbi, Nora, and Regina Musoke, that they may rest in peace. We all together join to pray for all the mothers that have fallen asleep that they may share in the glory of the saints in heaven. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. In turn of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Today, dear friends, as we celebrate the summit of the Ascension of the Lord, we also would like to uh, congratulate our mothers who are celebrating Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to you. <clears throat> but also, this Sunday is the fifth, eighth World Day of Social Communication. We take a moment to contemplate on the communication as a medium of exchange of love and relationship among our brothers and sisters. Jesus, that has gone before us in the heavenly kingdom, he prepares for us a seat so that we, having carried out our duties diligently, we shall at one moment join him in his Father's glory. For at times we walked in darkness and we put ourselves away from Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Let us seek for God's mercy and pardon. I confess to Almighty God that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, as the blessed ever virgin, all things and sins unto my brothers and sisters to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, may forgive us our sins and lead us to life everlasting.
Let us pray. Gladden us with holy joys, Almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving for the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation. And where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to foreign hope through Christ our Lord. He was lifted up while they looked on. First reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In my earlier work, Theophilus, I dealt with everything Jesus had done and taught from the beginning until the day he gave his instructions to the apostles he had chosen through the Holy Spirit and was taken up to heaven. He had shown himself alive to them after his passion by many demonstrations. For 40 days he had continued to appear to them and tell them about the kingdom of God. When he had been at table with them, he had told them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait, for, to wait there for what the Father had promised. It is, he had said, what have you heard me speak about? John baptized with water, but you, not many days from now, will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, having met together, they asked him, Lord, has the time come? Are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know times or dates that the Father has decided by his own authority, but you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes unto you, and then you will be my witness, not only in Jerusalem, but throughout Judea and Samaria, and indeed to the ends of the earth. As he said this, he was lifted up while they looked on, and a cloud took him from their sight. They were still staring into the sky, when suddenly two men in white were standing near them, and they said, Why are you men from Galilee standing here looking into the sky? Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, this same Jesus will come back in the same way as you have seen him go there. The word of the Lord. Gold mounts is thrown to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. Trumpet blast, 
Sing praise for God, sing praise, sing praise to our King, sing praise. of what is revealed, to bring you to full knowledge of him. May he enlighten the eyes of your mind, so that you can see what hope his call holds for you, what rich glories he has promised the saints will inherit, and how eminently great is the power that he has exercised for us believers. This you can tell from the strength of his power at work in Christ when he used it to raise him from the dead and to make him sit at his right hand in heaven far above every sovereignty authority power or domination or any other name that can be named not only in this age but also in the age to come he has put all things under his feet and made him as ruler of everything the head of the church, which is his body, the fulfillment of him who fills the whole creation, the word of the Lord. Brother, let us rise up to welcome the gospel. <laughs> Jesus showed himself to the eleven and said to them, Go out into the whole world, proclaim the good news to all creation. He who, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who does not believe will be condemned. There are the signs that will be associated with believers. In my name, they will cast out devils. They love the gifts of tongues. They will pick up snakes in their hands and then be unharmed. Should they drink deadly poison, they will lay their hands on the sick and who will recover. And so the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven. There, at the right hand of God, he took his place while they, going out, preached everywhere. 
the Lord working with them and confirming the word by the signs that accompanied it. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends, dear brothers and sisters, the Lord's good. All the time. Dear friends, in a very special way, we join, especially men and children, to congratulate our mothers on this very special day. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> on this day, we appreciate your parental love, nurturing, your resilience, and all that you do, especially as an icon of uh, morals of faith who the children look out to but also we take a moment to reflect on Pope Francis uh, celebration of this day he tells us a society without mothers would be a dishumanized society for mothers are always even in the worst moments witnesses of tenderness dedication and more strength. And it says, dearest mothers, thank you for what you are in your family and for what you give to the church and to the world. So today we pray for the mothers that, that have been abandoned by the fathers. We pray for the mothers uh, that are trying their level best to provide for their families. We pray for the mothers that are going through different trials that may they have strength to carry on and the Lord is with you in your different tribulations. Today, dear friends, on this Sunday is the 5th A World Day of Social Communication and the theme that guides us through this Sunday uh, from the Holy Father, it relates with artificial intelligence and the wisdom of the heart towards a fully human communication it's an international world day of social communication. And the Holy Father uh, tries to tackle this innovation called artificial intelligence in relation to the human intelligence. And he says the artificial intelligence is not truly intelligent because it lacks the aspects, number one, of free will. It lacks the aspect of decision, and it cannot truly really be considered intelligent. Because in talk of intelligence, it requires being conscious and self volition of which the artificial intelligence systems do not have. However, we appreciate the innovation, but we should uh, be very cautious that this innovation should not compromise the human relationship. Because communication is meant are to bring out the feelings of one another. And so, we are called to be very cautious in regards to the use of innovations and technologies so that we do not break the human heart, we do not break each other, but rather build up a community of love. And today, in a very special way, uh, the Social Communication Sunday is being celebrated by the Archbishop in Gaza Parish. And not just on a celebration, but the, uh, the Archbishop makes a plea to us all together in the Archdiocese to have an extra support that we are going to render to support the Communications Department of the Archdiocese. So we uh, make an appeal to you, our parishioners, uh, to actually give an extra support. We are meant to have a second collection, but that one shall not have. But in this uh, collection of the offer tree, we make an appeal that we put in something extra to support uh, our Archbishop in his different works, especially evangelization through communication. Dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the Ascension Sunday. We celebrate this solemnity 
with joy because it gives us joy all together. We know that as we run our race, at a particular moment, my race will come to the end. But when it comes to the end, all together, what gives us joy is that Christ has gone before us and in him we shall rest. And so, the ascension of Jesus into heaven, we celebrate Jesus' exaltation to God's right hand, which you find in the letter of St. Paul as he writes to the Philippians. Therefore, God highly exalted him and gave him the name above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven, on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. Today, dear friends, we celebrate uh, this solemnity that sustains the hope of Christians that one day, together, having finished our race, we shall be united with Christ in heaven. The Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches that Jesus Christ is the head of the church who precedes us to the heavenly glory, where we all together as the members of this one body shall be united with him forever. Christ's ascension was the culmination of God's plan for him. Each one of us, dear friends, has a particular purpose, and the particular purpose that we have is not for self-enrichment, but to serve the Lord through sacrificial offerings, through the love that we render to those around us. And when it comes to the culmination, definitely uh, it's a moment for us to return back to the Father, because from the Father we come, and back to him we shall rest. So today's solemnity reminds us the culmination of God's divine plan for Jesus. Having finished his rest, he now returns back to the Father to be crowned for being a faithful servant, for being diligent to the work that was meant to do here on earth. Through Jesus' resurrection, Jesus proved are two things. Number one, that was the promised Messiah. And secondly, that through him who has overcome death, those who persevere in living with faith in Jesus, we too shall overcome death and inherit the kingdom that has been prepared for us since the beginning of the world. Making a request to the Old Testament, the chosen people of God, the Israelites, were called they got from Sereva in Egypt, and they were led through the Red Sea uh, into the Exodus, to the Promised Land. So in the New Testament, it's a version that altogether changes. And the inheritance is not a physical land of Israel, but heaven. And the journey from, Israel, uh, from slavery in Egypt, is, uh, crossing through the Red Sea, is now a journey from sin through the sea of baptism. And dear brothers and sisters, it's a journey from sin to lead us into the heavenly glory. The feast that we celebrate today uh, marks the stage of transition in the story of incarnation and resurrection. But Jesus is not visible in the heavenly body as such, but we can have the feeling and experience of having him around us. The feast, the ceremony that we are celebrating today is quoted in the Psalms 68 verse 16 when it says uh, that Christ the Lord was among the angels on Mount Sinai who spoke to Moses and from there he received the oracles of God to give to the Israelites. Jesus is taken up into the heavens from the presence of his disciples. And like we've had two men appear dressed in the white, and they told him, like you've seen him go, it's the very same way we'll come back. This is very significant because it reminds us of the glorious and the triumphant return of Jesus that is not too far away from us. It's also a reminder 
that the kingdom of God is deep within our hearts and it reminds us of the presence of the Holy Spirit who watches and protects us as we spread the light of Christ to dispel the darkness of the world. Dear friends, as we celebrate this solemnity, one of the fundamental questions that I would like us to ask is what are we to do? And so what? So the answer is what you've heard in the gospel. Jesus said, we are not to sit around, but we are to do something. We are called to be witnesses of Jesus that has uh, ascended back to the Father. He leaves us here to become a replica of his presence. The mandate of the disciples that you've heard, Jesus leaves a mission into the hands of the apostles. Go therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We all together is a mission that we partake of by virtue of baptism. We are called all together to assist in the works of evangelization, but also to, uh, to become witnesses of Jesus in our different life contexts all together. Vatican Council II uh, published 16 important documents, and one of them reminds the laity of the role that they have in witnessing to Christ and in making the world holy in our very concrete ways of life, at our workplaces, in our homes, and with those that we relate with. Today, dear friends, we have a mandate to go and make disciples of all nations all together. We are called to become proclaimers and evangelizers. We proclaim by the word of the mouth, but we evangelize by deeds. The resurrection of Christ gives us hope altogether that the forces hostile to God and to true humanity have been overcome through Jesus' death and resurrection and subsequently his ascension back to the Father. It gives us hope when we are hopeless. It gives us hope to carry on when you do not have to find any reason to do so. Dear brothers and sisters, like Christ who has overcome and he ascended back to the Father with the victory, it gives us hope that we too all together we shall ascend to the heavenly glory. The first reading that we heard from the Acts of the Apostles recounts the events of the last moments and the meeting of Jesus with the Apostles before his ascension into heaven. Christ gives very important instructions to the Apostles. Do not leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for what the Father had promised. That is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was very inevitable to strengthen the Apostles. Because he left alone, they could not achieve much. But with the presence of the Holy Spirit, their success would be enormous. And it is the Holy Spirit, dear friends, that will enable us to become witnesses by deeds and also to have the courage to proclaim. This reminds us, dear friends, that before we embark on our different engagements for us to achieve success, and if it rhymes to the will of God, we need the presence of the Holy Spirit. And as we've heard in the scripture, as Jesus was lifted up, uh, the apostles were around and they looked up in the sky when he was being taken. And what does this mean? We read in the second uh, book of Kings that tells us how Elijah, uh, who was in the presence of the young man Elisha, suddenly was taken up uh, into the heavens by the chariots of fire, of fire. And thereafter, Elisha received the spirit of his master, Elijah, to go and do what exactly Elijah was doing. Dear friends, we two all together shall be empowered to do the same as our Lord and Master. 
when the Spirit of the Lord is with us. Because far away from the Spirit of the Lord, we can do nothing. St. Paul, as he writes uh, to the Colossians, he assures them that since we have been raised uh, up to be with Christ, we too shall together uh, be with him. And thereafter, look for the things that are in, uh, in heavens, where Christ is sitting at God's right hand. All together, we are called to put all our efforts to gaze at Christ, who has preceded us in the heavenly glory. And as we frequently and every day pray for each other, uh, that we too may share in that glory that Christ has partaken of. Dear brothers and sisters, when the apostles were standing and looking up into the skies, seeing how Jesus was being taken up to heaven, the disciples believe in the risen Lord and the power of the Spirit and their hope in the second coming of Jesus uh, have to be expressed in their commitment to transforming the world. The apostles were told, like you've seen Jesus go, it's the very same way we'll come back. But for us to partake of that glory, our feet have to be firm on ground. And that means that for us to share in that glory, we have to accomplish the divine plans that he has set before us. There is the glory that awaits us, which is preceded by diligent service, by loving and serving our brothers here on earth, and subsequently, together, we shall share in that glory. Jesus reminds us in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 12, verse 35 to 48, Blessed are those servants that upon the return of his master will find them busy working, serving their brothers and sisters. Dear friends, it's a moment for you and I to look up to the heavens. It's a moment for you and I to lift up our hearts. It's a moment for you and I to pray for the grace that as we patiently await for the coming of the Lord, may he find us diligently serving him and Jesus that has preceded us in the heavenly glory to prepare for us the seats. We too may be counted worthy uh, to sit among the saints in heaven and share in that glory as the faithful servants. I believe in one God. and Savior ascended into heaven and just reminded his disciples that he will come back again until he comes who continues work by praying for all peoples and their needs. That the church on earth will ever keep its evangelical mission of making disciples of all nations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, preciously hear us. That the leaders of the world may realize that they must give an account of their work to Jesus Christ when he returns as a judge. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. That no one will be so attached to this earth so as to regret being called to eternal life in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. That we may all come to the maturity of faith in the fullness of the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you for the gift of motherhood, for it is through a mother, Mary, that Jesus Christ came to earth. Mold our hearts and those of our mothers like that of Mary, that we may have the strength and courage to support our children. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us that all our dead parishioners, especially our dead mothers and aunties, may ascend to glory with Christ our priest and king. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously, in a moment of silence, each one of us lift up and with a prayer to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. God, our Father in heaven, your Son is now seated at the real right hand, enthroned in eternal glory. We make our petitions through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. It is now time for offer tree. Like earlier on uh, informed us, all together we have uh, been asked to support the communications department within our diocese. So as we bring our offer tree, let us include something extra to support uh, this works of evangelization.
we stand and the procession comes in front. Sacrifice and as may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. We offer sacrifice now, application, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Don't you pray that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is to right and just our duty and our salvation. Raise and ever to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended to the, to the highest heavens, and the angels gazed in wonder. Mediator between God and man, Judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with Pascal joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers and angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
Lord, the point of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this good to pray by sending down your spirit upon them like they do fall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered doing into his passion, he took bread and giving hands broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. of salvation, giving thanks that you us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread out to the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember your servants, Mary, Osoke, Nora, Solon, Regina, who you have called from this world to yourself, grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who are fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, holy prayer, that the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph as spouse, with your blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased us out to the ages, may merit to be Christ's eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all grand honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and from thy divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, gracious regard and peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we bear us from sin and suffer from all distress, as we await to the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, to set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and gracious regard, peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord with you always. Let us wave to each other as a sign of God's love and peace.
the Lamb of God, behold Jesus, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who go to the supper of the Lamb. Thank you. 
celebrate divine mysteries. Pray to pray that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you through Christ our Lord. Amen. May we recite our novena to the to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, third person of the Blessed Trinity, Spirit of truth, love and holiness proceeding from the Father and the Son, and equal to them in all things, I adore you and love you with all my heart. Dearest Holy Spirit, confiding in your deep personal love for me, I'm making it this novena for the following request. If it should be your holy will to grant it. Teach me, Divine Spirit, to know and seek my last end. Grant me the holy fear of God. Grant me true contrition and patience. Do not let me fall into sin. Give me an increase of faith, hope, and charity. And bring forth in my soul all the virtues proper to my state of life. Make me a faithful disciple of Jesus and an obedient child of the church. Give me efficacious grace sufficient to keep the commandments and to receive the sacraments worthily. Give me the four cardinal virtues, your seven gifts, your three efforts. Raise me to perfection and the state of life to which you have called me and me through a happy day to everlasting life. I ask you through Christ. May you briefly take up our seats. I call forth uh, members of St. Javira to come and pass on the information they have prepared for us.
Dear brethren, I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. My name is Joanita Muema Chimera from St. Javira Community and my colleague. Lubura Elijah, also from St. Javira Community. We thank you for the overwhelming support that you have extended towards Kaloli Ranga Tower project. Please note that any amount counts. Let's clap for ourselves for the work we have done so far. We are the church and have a cardinal responsibility to support each other, especially on projects like Kaloli Ranga Tower that will help our parish in the works of evangelization. Our performance to date shows that 737 parishioners have contributed cash, UG shillings, 114 million, and the outstanding pledges of shillings, 27 million, which is 44%. With three weeks to go, we need to raise the balance of 56, which is 276 million. We have three ways of paying. You can pay 20,000 shillings a week or 80,000 shillings per month or 320 as a one payment, like you can make it a one-off. Wishing you a blessed Ascension Day and Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers here. Find us at the tent and stand to be counted. Thank you very much. We have celebrated the session Sunday, Seiko B. And next Sunday, we shall celebrate Pentecost Sunday. Next Sunday, 19th May, will be our Good Samaritan Sunday. We are also reminded and encouraged to play our pledges, the Golden Hearted Book, or also make donations by inserting our money in the two boxes in this church. Or else, take your donation to the office and obtain your receipt. We still have Karoli Tower project shirts on sale. For the children, they are still at 30,000 each. For us adults, 50,000 each. This is something that you live with for some good time after you bought it, to remind you always that you also supported the project in such a way. All parents whose children registered for holiday catechism classes will commence their classes tomorrow, Monday. And these classes will always be Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays of every week until the end of the holiday, from 9 a.m. in the morning to 12 p.m. in the afternoon. The Teaching Commission, together with the Women's Guild, inform you about the children's holiday program. The program started yesterday, and there will always be every Friday from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Please, parents, send your children for this educative program during this holiday. The sense of the week and marriage bands can find them at the notes board and also in our scroll booklet. May I call forth Fiona, Kasime, Brianna, and Braxton to come for a special blessing as to celebrate their birthdays. May we all rise? May the Spirit of We thank you for the gift to their parents. We thank you for a gift of all the good people around them. 
As we contemplate your goodness, you remind us that you've set a mission before us to serve you so that you can share in that glory that you prepared for us. May you brighten the days of these your children. May these our little ones grow in wisdom and understanding and find favor in your face and among men. We seek your blessings upon them today and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Happy birthday to you. be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amas is ended, remain in the peace of Christ.